everyone loves a cute, cool-looking mascot character. The 90s, as I've said many times before, was an era for these bozos. Most notable ones are Mario, Sonic, Spyro, and today's topic, everyone's favorite bandicoot, Crash. The orange platforming hero made its debut on the Sony PlayStation in 1996, and it was a smash hit. Soon enough, Crash Bandicoot would garner sequels, spin-offs, and a remaster trilogy. Oh wait, this is the part where I say, and MERCHANDISE! Sorry, headphone users. And lots of it. We'll be here for a while, so snack on some Wumpa Fruit as we dive into the world of Crash Bandicoot merchandise. Crash's big step into the video game world made him a star to say the least. American and Japanese releases have a notable change in art style. Crash looks cuter in Japan, while he looks more cool and serious in the United States. Both countries are given a strategy guide in their respective languages. Harahara Doki Doki published a Japanese guide while the US was solely licensed and distributed by Sony. The reoccurring slap on the box art and call it a day attitude are what the American distributors follow when it comes to covers. Japan just loves to do something different if need be. Game stores in the US would have this displayed at the front counter for customers to see. It's a cardboard stand of Crash in one of the early levels of the game. And speaking of early, if you crash in early, meaning if you arrive at select stores at the crack of dawn, you can get an alternative CD with alternate tracks. It's nothing too special, but worth mentioning. During E3 of 96, Sony employees would wear this Crash polo shirt and snapback cap to show the world how much they love Crash. Another theory is that these were given out as prizes or as freebies for playing the game's demo. Regardless, these items are limited and aren't easy to find. Also, THOSE LIPS BE THICK! Taylor Kurosaki's business card featured all US art of Crash with the Naughty Dog logo. How and where you got these is unknown, but if any of you have one, chances are it's a valuable piece of Crash history. As a pre-order bonus in Japan, you'd get a yo-yo of Crash running behind a green background. Is it a light-up yo-yo? Hard to tell in this low-quality photo. And while we're on the subject of yo-yos, there's a Christmas-themed yo-yo with the Crash and Parappa mascot costumes. The back of it says not for sale, so I can assume it was given out as a prize or to employees around Christmas. Along with these bone cars, perhaps. Each card has Crash, Parappa, and holiday-themed scenery. It's so wholesome, and it makes me sad that this year's Christmas won't be pretty. Anyway, another Crash and Parappa-themed item is this Japanese fan. It's made of paper, so I'd advise caution when using it. These easily rip and tear. This wristwatch has a stencil as the Crash 1 drawing with the logo. How and where you got this watch is unknown. These last two items are perhaps the cream of the crop when it comes to original Crash Bandicoot items. Starting off with this press kit given to Sony employees before E3. It gives details about the game and how it will be presented to the audience. Last but most certainly not least is Project Wombat. This book is dated back to 1995 and contains early concepts of Crash Bandicoot. A book that was published in 2018 which we'll get to later, has these early concepts. But this book is the OG Bandicoot Files. 9Mat2 on YouTube showcases this book's contents, and I recommend you check it out for more details. Link in the description. When Crash's sequel, Cortex Strikes Back, released, the craze for this orange Bandicoot shot through the roof. Japan just a Door the little victory dance he does at the end of a level. So much so that a VHS tape about it was released, along with a desk patch sheet with the steps. Talk about dedication! The guide for Crash 2 in Japan in fact features the box art, while on the back it has a bunch of Crash faces. It boasts tips and tricks to help you 100% the game. 
Following the Crash Mania, Kawashi Ari wrote and drew a manga for the Bandicoot serialized by Coral Coral Comic. Its run went from December of 1997 through February of 1999. The manga follows the three main games of the franchise, hence why there's only three volumes. Once again at E3, Crash t-shirts were given out to players after playing a demo of Crash 2 and worn by Sony employees. If you subscribe to PlayStation Underground, you'd receive a demo disc of Crash 2 as a bonus in the issue. It promises to be the coolest platform game of the year and it did really well, considering other games like Final Fantasy VII and Star Fox 64 were on the shelves. Both official and unofficial guides were distributed to the public, both of which are by Prima, an official one by Publishing Dimension, and another unofficial one by Bratty Games. The big difference between these guides is the artwork, but the contents themselves are sure to help you complete the game. Much like its predecessor, the sequel gets a cool little standee to promote the game featuring three renders of Crash in the hub world. The poster for Crash 2 has our protagonist in confusion, the PlayStation button spinning around him. Do not underestimate the power of the PlayStation, it says. Japanese Crash Banjukusu music CD I probably butchered that name. Features four different versions of the song Crash Banjukusu, which was used for many Crash Bandicoot advertisements in Japan. Thanks, Crash Bandicoot Archive! Much like last year, Crash 2 themed phone cards were distributed to the public or given to Sony employees. I wish I could read that, but I can't. Speaking of cards, the set of 16 are included in Bluebird's food products. It includes one gold foil special card and there are five to collect. In local game stores, you'd see this banner of colorful artwork with Crash, Coco, Cortex, and the others. On the back, it has the iconic PlayStation logo, but let's face it, we'd rather have Crash in the game on display. Japan has a more eye-catching poster with Crash and friends at a party in space. It kind of looks like the Golden Saucer from Final Fantasy VII. This would be hung wherever games were sold in Japan. Also, these flyers might not be too far from the poster. During E3, Sony employees would wear this shirt with text saying Crash is back. Another shirt just has the logo, but I'm not sure if it was from the same event. If you pre-ordered Crash 2 in Japan, you'd get this adorable plush of Crash Bandicoot himself. He's not in any pose, but that's okay because other plushes capture Crash's iconic poses later on. In a Sears catalog from 97, they had Crash 2 listed with a screenshot from the first game. It's rather bizarre, perhaps this was an early listing? This idiot sure doesn't know! Crash Bandicoot Warped was the last game Naughty Dog would develop before the IP was sold to Universal for better or worse. Regardless, this was the year Resource would release their Crash Bandicoot toy line with Crash on a Jetboard, Crash with a Jetpack, Coco, Neo Cortex, Tiny Tiger, and Komodo Mill figures along with a Crash figure keychain. Each figure comes with a stand, some crystals, crates, and Wumpa fruit. These are notorious for breaking even after taking them out of the package. You know, I would... Uh, well, of course, there's uh, some assembly required. Yeah, I advise you keep them in a box or be extremely careful handling them. The plushes aren't breakable at least, but there's only four and they are keychains. The set consists of Crash, Fake Crash, Coco, Cortex, and Komodo. Each tag has text saying, from the shady shores of Insanity Beach to the horrific halls of Cortex Vortex. The kooky characters of the popular video game come to life. Rosaurus wasn't the only one who made Crash plushes. Play by Play had this unique plush on store shelves. His hair is fuzzy, just like the Rosaurus fake Crash, and he has marble eyes. Unlike the US, Japan plays it safe with their cute version of Crash and their Banpresto plush line. Each plush is in a pose, whether it be running, jumping, dancing, twisting, or have swirly eyes? Huh. But the one that may be the best in the line is the Santa Crash. Santa! Santa! Oh my god! My favorite character in a Santa outfit is always a treat. But I've gotta say, 
This one is perhaps the most expensive. It was a UFO prize in Japan, which would cost roughly 3,000 yen, depending on how many tries it takes to obtain it, and on how fair the machine was. But current asking prices range from two to four hundred dollars, making this perhaps the most expensive crash plush to exist. Yeah! <laughs> If you have this in your collection, give yourself a freaky pat on the back. Tommy released a set of Crash and Coco bendable figures with Coco holding a translucent image of Polar. These are the only two known in the set, unfortunately. Another keychain Tommy created was this light up one with Crash on top of a crate. If you push him down, the bottom will light up. Think of it as a flashlight. Flip phones are actually considered cool in Japan, and many people put phone straps on them. Like this one, perhaps. It's a crash in a running or jumping pose. The packaging even gives the weight of the strap 10 kilograms. But if phone straps and keychains aren't your thing, Tommy also made many figures of Crash, Polar, and Grin. Crash is in a standalone card while the animal buddies are in the same packaging. Van Presto made the most of keychains with Crash in different poses and even an Angel Crash. That's something you don't see every day unless you die a lot in the games, like me! As a memento for selling over 1 million copies in Japan alone, this statue was sculpted and painted to remind the world of this grand achievement. Employees would receive said statue as a way of saying thank you for making this game possible. Now, these porcelain figures are very interesting. These tiny little things are known as faves. I think that's how you pronounce it. According to epiphanyfigures.com, faves are figures that are traditionally put into Keynes cakes, also known as epiphany cakes. Keynes cakes are eaten yearly on January 6th in celebration of the Christian holiday of Epiphany. Originally, a bean was hidden in the cake. The person who finds the bean in their piece is named Keen for the day. Modern Keen cakes now use porcelain or metal faves instead of beans. Not sure how true that is, but it's still cool. The year for these guys are unknown, but I assume these guys were put in the cakes around the year 1998 or 1999. If any of you know more, leave your response in the comments. This Crash 3 press kit contains info about the game, a t-shirt, and two discs which I assume contain a demo of the game, and some trailers, and perhaps some concept art. The box of stuff comes in is sharp looking. I really just love the design for this. In Japanese you have a capture machine, so you can win this clock. It has Crash and Coco riding a dinosaur in the center, with the numbers around them like a normal clock. This would sit on your nightstand and burst out either a loud obnoxious noise or a crash tune. Hopefully a crash tune. The company TV Game Entertainment also made a game rack for your games with the same artwork from the clock. Both items have the same shade of orange to keep it consistent. In Europe, you can get a bundle with the game and its PlayStation game carrying case. This combo pack most likely costs a little bit more since they're getting a case and a cool looking box to boot. Tiger Electronics got a hold of the Crash license and they made some LCD games. This premiere game and this 99X game. While they aren't the best games, they are awesome collector's items. Quest made one too, but with a ruler? Why? In specifically marked boxes of General Mills cereal, you can get $5 off your purchase of Crash 3. Naughty Dog and Universal marketed this game perfectly in both the US and Japan. That's how games sell most of the time. Marketing. But we aren't here for an entrepreneur lesson. In sticker vending machines, you would see these guys for a quarter. Nowadays, it probably sold for more than that. A store called Marks and Spencer near the graphics tees, you'd see these shirts for sale featuring artwork of Crash 3. He's cool, but he's no fool, is what this shirt says, and it has Crash ready to do the flop. <laughs> Japan had the sweater sold, and if you look closely in this poor quality image, you can barely make out the word warped. This shirt looks like it was given out to those who played the demo E3, but I could be wrong, like always. At a game show in Japan, you get this nifty animal passport with the mascot face and information. 
His hobby is apparently dancing, and his favorite food is apples. Finally, we get to the guides. Japan has this world tour guide, and the US has the standard Prima guide. But this time, the Prima edition gets a greatest hits variation. It apparently sold enough copies to warrant this edition. Now, this poster reminds me of Gex. This Crash 3 poster is like a movie poster, and I love it! The next poster is Linear Crash in Scuba Gear Surrounded by Sea Life. This most likely came in a gaming magazine or was displayed in stores. PlayStation Games Magazine had this poster of Crash with a warp portal, and the other side has Lara Croft. This image was either in a magazine or was a poster in stores so let people know the game is out. With the same art, Sears had a coupon to get the game $5 off. Kabaya, a company in Japan, released a set of Crash trading cards with the characters from the third game. Each pack came in these blue boxes with the cute Crash design. Also in Japan were these stickers of Crash, Coco, Aku Aku, and more by Kabaya. On the back it has Aku Aku and Coco, but what makes these odd is that they promote Crash 2 in the year 1998. It seems Naughty Dog wasn't done marketing that game. Interesting. This logo hat was sold in stores, most likely Hot Topic since that's where you're likely to find video game themed hats. Threads and accessories had a line of Crash apparel with a polar fleece pullover, collar block long sleeve crew including a kids edition, and a brushed twill cap. You order these through a catalog or online. Sadly, we never heard of Threads and accessories ever again after that. Did I say Crash 3 was the last game Naughty Dog developed? I lied! Crash Team Racing, or CTR for short, is the last one this time, I promise. While this game isn't a platformer, it was well received by fans and critics alike. Getting a remaster in 2019, but we'll talk about that later. Japan got a guidebook featuring super cute artwork on the cover, and Prima is at it again with a guide featuring the box art of the game. But each gives out tips and tricks on how to beat the game. If the game doesn't appeal to you, there's always these RC carts featuring Crash and Neo Cortex. Sadly, they are restricted with the wires attached to them. Such a shame since the Mario Kart 64 RC carts were wireless. Above shelves where games are sold, you'd see this display showcasing CTR artwork. Back then, these were common, but nowadays we don't get much in terms of banners. This photo book consists of old photos of a Crash mascot at the beach, and a red Ferrari, a McDonald's, Blockbuster, and one where he fell here. There are other photos, but that's just to name a few. To hold your CDs or PlayStation games, you can use this plastic CTR case. It was either sold in stores or as a promo item given out events like E3. In Japan, this cute school supplies case was up for sale in stationery stores. That artwork looks oddly familiar. Go with that, there is a CTR pencil sharpener and regular Crash pencils released through 1999 and 2000, these pens with cute figure toppers. Just don't let other kids borrow them because they'll never return them. Also in Japan are these Crash and Fake Crash pullback mini cars from the PlayStation Club. You can see them advertised for 450 yen each. An item similar to these is this Crash and Car keychain, but it's not from the same catalog. It's unknown where it came from, but it is from Japan. This plain metal keychain is from the US, either sold or given out as a bonus for pre-ordering the game, or you got after playing the demo E3. Nothing special compared to this one from Funko Land. Funko Land originated as a video game store in 1989, and then in 1999, EB Games bought Funko Land which is the same year that CTR released. Kinda coincidence, huh? In 2005, however, Funko Land started selling lifestyle, accessories, and toys aimed to boys ages from 6 to 14 years old. In that same store, you could have most likely found this for sale. It's a CTR-themed pinball machine. Video game-themed pinball machines were pretty big in the 80s and 90s, so for Crash to get one is no surprise. In a Japanese game magazine, you'd find this demo disc of CTR. Sadly, I don't know which magazine this came in, but these discs were common back in the day. Before we had free demos on the eShop, we had demo discs. 
Shogaku Khan's website had this incredible crash in cart plush for 2,800 yen that sold until the end of December 1999. Keshi figures are popular in the collecting community, and this is the first and only crash one to exist. It has the non furry sale text on the bottom, meaning this was given out as a bonus for pre-ordering the game, and when those are walls in video game stores, this checkered flag would hang to let consumers know the game is for sale. It's a really nice piece with the mascot and checkered flag background. In the US, there is a race with the pros sweepstakes. The winner will win a trip to the Napa 500 for two, covering all the costs, including hotel and traveling. It's a random drawing, so the odds are fair for everyone. Unless you cheat and put your name in there multiple times. Another display piece you might have seen alongside the sweepstakes is this image of Crash in a car next to a PlayStation logo. It would most likely be accompanied by other gaming icons at the time. This born to be bad shirt would be in select clothing stores like Hot Topic and perhaps Marks and Spencer. On the back it says, born to spin, born to jump, and born to ride. This next one has text saying, wanna play, with Crash holding a wump of fruit to bazooka. Last week, have Crash burst out of your chest like an Aliens movie. Not literally. That's just how the shirt looks. Resaurus released Series 2 of the Crash line with Biker Crash and Coco, a pilot Crash, Crash in scuba gear, Coco with a wave rider, Dr. N Trophy, Dingo Dial, and Dr. Engine. Tiny and Dingo Dial were going to get warped renditions, but they never hit store shelves along with these big head figures in regular plushes. However, in 2005, the prototype of Coco was sold on eBay and a giant Cortex was found. Sadly, we don't know if a giant crash in Coco exists. A Series 3 was planned, but because her source went bankrupt in 2001, Cola Cone, Papu Papu, and Dr. Embryo, Arctic Crash and Polar, and Pine Stripe Portaroo and Ripperoo were never released. Someone by the name of GSteppy94, sorry if I butchered your name, actually customized a Crash figure to showcase what he would have looked like in figure form. It's really impressive, and that Polar looks so accurate. It's a darn shame Resaurus lacked quality control in their later years and produced more figures than they could sell and put on shelves. This jetboard set you snap together and place stickers on carefully is by Polar Lights, and according to the box, the skill level is one. Man, it's so easy a caveman can do it. It even includes a lump of fruit and a crystal. Another company by the name of Plain Mantis created the Stunt Cycle Crash Plate set with what appears to be a Resaurus Biker Crash. The crates are made of cardboard and it seems to have placed stickers on the props. Another set similar to that is this Extreme Triple Play set with again what appears to be a Resaurus Crash figure. A bike, a scooter, some ramps, and other props. I bet a lot of these broke at the hands of careless kids who had these poor bandicoots crash into walls to only have them fall to pieces. They ain't crash dummies, am I right? Japan is known for not only their phone cards, like this one of Crash and a Monkey from Ape Escape, but phone straps as well. This set consists of Crash in a variety of poses. Coco, Baby T, and Pura. There's also a separate one of Polar, but he might not be from the same set. Yuchen produced a set of felt Crash plush keychains for either 200 yen each, or that's how much it cost to play the machine the slip was displayed on. All are of Crash in different poses, except for one which is the fake Crash. Aside from these plush keychains, there was a set with Crash in two poses and Coco in their Japanese art style. The Crash plushes are keychains, but there's a big one from the same set I guess I could call character goods. These, just like the pullback cards, were from the same catalog. In the US, Troll published a How to Draw Crash in the Game as a part of How to Draw Insert Franchise here in the Game series. These are nice reference pieces, but if you truly want to develop a style, draw from real life and soon you'll form your own style. But we're not here for a drawing lesson, and let's face it, I can't draw to save my life, so don't learn from me! This next piece is a decal of Crash you can slap onto your car or a window, but I think it's more of a sticker than a decal, though it's big to be like one. 
These whistles are party items given out to guests to use or hang on to as a memento. You can find them in the party supplies aisle at your local Walmart. Colossi, a food company in Italy, sold crash themed biscuits or cookies. Each cookie is in the shape of crash in the game. And what better way to store them than in this cookie jar? Video game themed cookie jars in the 90s are highly collectible and fragile. If you had kids and this was in reach, chances are it would shatter along with its value. During Halloween, if you walked by the costumes in 1999, you'd see this. I don't know why, but that face is freaking me out! The prototype of this mask is silver without the paint to showcase how the mask would look, and it seems nothing has changed from the prototype to the finished product aside from the new paint job. Regardless, I'd hate to bump it to anyone wearing this cursed costume. Believe it or not, Crash Bandicoot got trading cards featuring cool artwork. They didn't last though, since around this time the Pokemon craze was at large and the TCG was all the rage among schools. Just like last year, Crash gets new LCD games but in the style of an arcade. These make better display pieces than actual games, unfortunately. They play like Frogger where you avoid traffic to reach the other side of the road. The last one is this one, but in green, and I don't think it has the same game. Either way, you're better off displaying them than playing them, as they don't last long either, which is kinda sad. With Naughty Dog behind him, Crash hits a new game under a new name. Kind of. This game is Crash Bash, a Mario Party-esque game where you and your friends compete in minigames while racing around the board. It got mixed reviews, but some actually really love this game, and it's a good Mario Party substitute. As a bonus for pre-ordering the game or playing the demo E3, you would get this jump rope with the logo on the handles and or this lunchbox that will keep your food cold or hot. Both of these items are promos, meaning they were not for sale. In Japan, they had the CD soundtrack for sale in music stores, featuring all of the game's tracks. The disc appears to be small like a GameCube disc in this photo. Pretty odd. Both Crash Bash and Spyro 3 got these pop-out like press kits featuring a game demo and some stickers. Inside each case contains info about the game and of course these sick cardboard pop-outs of Crash and Spyro. I love how creative designers get for these kits, it's incredible! This set of phone straps was either sold at stores or was given out as a pruder bonus in Japan. The charms have the logo, Crash Spinning, Coco, Aku Aku, and Neo Cortex. Also in Japan was this poster used to promote the game with cute and colorful artwork. It also showcases the release date and the price of the game. Sadly, Japan didn't get a guide for Crash Bash, but the US did thanks to Prima, and if you get the guide at Toys R Us, you'll get exclusive stickers. From Namco are these straps. Keychains? Jewelry? It's hard to tell. The set has Crash riding a car, Neo Cortex, Crash in his orange Baron outfit, and Crash jumping. They also released a set of plushes, a regular Crash, and Crash in his Orange Baron outfit, or pilot outfit. Fake Crash looks like he's a part of the set as well, but the tag only shows Crash and the one in his pilot outfit. Namco, not to be confused with Namco, released a series called Slinky Pets, and Crash is part of that set. Be careful though, as these can break if played with a lot. These non-toxic erasers feature Crash-themed erasers, and regular racers for your pencils. Kind of odd the company didn't slap any sort of artwork on them. This mouse pad looks like the paper tag from the Kelly toy and play-by-play -play plushes we'll start seeing in a bit. It doesn't appear to be that big, meaning you have trouble moving the mouse on it. I mean, for the aesthetic it looks cool, but as a mouse pad? Uh, not really. And similar packaging as the erasers are these watches. They look cheap since they are geared towards kids along with these bendable crash figures with a motorcycle, snowboard, a super bike, a super deck, and what appears to be a giant rollerblade. This set of crash on wheels were most likely sold at dollar stores due to the cheap packaging and presentation. Regardless, these aren't easy to find and are highly collectible. Taco Bell gave out Crash and Spyro kids toys and kids meals, making these the first ever kids meal promotional toys for these two iconic mascots. Each toy has some sort of action, except for the mini Spyro plush. But these toys are rare since not many are aware that Taco Bell has kids' toys. And clothing stores, 
You define the simple yet effective shirt with Crash and a blue swirl background. Crash is in his early 2000s design before he made an even bigger change seven years later. This shirt would be wrapped in plastic packaging just like this one of Coco and of various Crash poses. The LCD games are still at it with this arm handheld game you can slap on your wrist and look stylish. TCH developed this game that appears to be another Frogger clone, but I can't say for sure. Also, I'm not sure if these are skins or special edition PlayStations, but slap-on skins weren't really big until a Nintendo DS. Team Lightning had a line of themed cars and Crash was one of them. It's got the early 2000s green, logo, and late 80s Crash artwork. These cars aren't super rare and collectible, but they still look cool. Before the year 2000 began, a Crash-themed calendar was printed in Japan featuring artwork for each month, and the front of the calendar had the Japanese CTR artwork inspired by Super Mario Kart. Also in Japan was this plush keychain of Crash in Blaine? So, Crash Blaine Coot? It was based on this mascot wearing the flashy Blaine. According to the tag, it's not for sale, so it was a promo item given out an event, or one in a UFO capture machine. The question is, which one? If I can translate this page, I'd tell you, but I can't read Japanese. Bandicoot the Wrath of Cortex is the first non-Naughty Dog platformer to hit store shelves. Some like it, some don't. It's a hit or miss. If you pre-order the game, you'll receive this bobblehead of Crash. He's still rocking the early 2000s look with a massive head. In Japan, he got the sticker as a bonus. Cute, but not as cool. At E3, if you played the demo, you'd get this metal logo keychain. A nice freebie, but nothing I'd wait in line for hours for. Brady Games published a strategy guide for the Wrath of Cortex this time around, and sadly, Japan never got a guide for the game. In game stores in the US, you'd see this cardboard standee with Crash and other games that don't seem to fit in with the Orange Bandicoot. In fact, it makes them stand out, just like Sorrow, Donald, and Goofy in the Pirates of the Caribbean world in Kingdom Hearts 2. This display would hold up until 2002, in fact. Along with that display, you'd see this poster Crash flying with a propeller contraption. Play by Play released a set of Crash plushes, one with his original outfit, one in his biker outfit, one wearing boxing gloves, and this one in a rapper outfit. All vary in sizes from small to large and can be found in the Universal Store. Europe had this exclusive Crash plush keychain by Play by Play in their Universal Store. Carl's Jr. and Hardy's teamed up and had a Crash and Spyro toy line for kids in June of 2001. Crash got three toys while Spyro only had one light-up toy. In said kids meal would contain a coloring book with Crash and Spyro for kids to color. Nesquik and Shreddies also did a promotion for Crash and Spyro, but they had a third IP, Laura Croft Tomb Raider. And each specially marked box would contain a toy of either Crash, Spyro, or Laura. Each figure has some sort of action, just like a kid's meal toy, and there are sticks to collect. Aside from the toys, you'd get stickers. Man, I miss promotions like these where companies would get video game IPs and have nifty items inside everyday food items. Husqvarna Viking made these embroidered patches of Crash in different poses along Coco and Cortex. You'd iron these patches onto your clothing to make bland everyday outfits look cooler. And similar packaging are these magnets you can place on the fridge or on a metal headboard. You can dress Crash in different outfits and make him ride the jetboard. This puzzle is of Crash in what appears to be a level from Warped, but it's made around the time of the Wrath of Cortex. It's a jumbo puzzle, meaning the size of pieces are large. Once again, in special marked boxes of General Mills cereal, you'd get these electronic trading cards for a game online for a limited time. It was an interactive collect and win DTC digital trading cards promotion presented to General Mills by Universal Interactive to promote the upcoming game. By Tomy in Japan, they sold this crash on Polar Bank, or it was one of the UFO capture machines. Either way, this is a really cute piece. As a kid, I remember owning this Mickey Mouse by Candle game, and Crash had a similar, and let's face it, better one. You'd steer the handles to move Crash along the course, compress the buttons, and make sounds, and work changed volume. For kids, this was a lot of fun. This lone sticker is intriguing. It was either in a gaming magazine or as a freebie. Either way, it makes you wonder where it originated from. Employees at E3 would wear this Crash Bandicoot shirt to promote the Wrath of Cortex. 
On the back, it would have Crash riding a jet board with text saying Winter 2001. A non-promo shirt is this Play in the Dark t-shirt you could buy in stores. It's honestly a cooler looking design than the previous one, but to each their own. This set of Gashapon or Gachapon figures are a mystery as to where they originated from. Brett Martin of VGMM had the sheet but lost it. Now we may never know their origin. But the set consists of Crash, Coco, Cortex, Komodo, and Spyro. Crash and Spyro never teamed up until 2001 to promotions at Carl's Jr. in Nestle, so it makes you wonder if they were sold during this time period. But that's only a theory at this point. In 2002, Crash hit Nintendo's latest handheld, the Game Boy Advance, with a huge adventure. In Germany, it was called Crash XS, according to this German poster, where it states that through the new formula of 2D platforming, Crash is as fun as ever, in rough translation. This 3D standee showcases the latest GBA games like Crash, The Huge Adventure, Sonic Advance, and more. It's miles better than that last one placing Crash in with gritty characters. For Japan, they have this poster of the Crash mascot relaxing near a beach with some screenshots of the game at the bottom. Also from Japan is this paper fan with Crash on one side and Spyro on the other. This was used to promote both Crash and Spyro on the Game Boy Advance, obviously. This phone strap of Crash ready to belly flop was either won in prize machines or purchased in stores. The red strap has the game's logo calling it Crash Bandicoot Advance instead of the huge adventure. These stickers of Crash and Friends were given out to those who pre-purchased the game to personalize their Game Boy Advance console. Any kid who got these would have used them, so it makes you wonder how many sheets like this one existed. In a 2002 issue of Nintendo Power, you'd get this poster of Crash flying with a jetpack. On the back has details and screenshots about the game instead of another poster. For kids in Japan, this utensil set contains many forks and spoons and chopsticks. It was either sold in stores or it won as a prize, which I doubt. Because let's face it, how would you win this? Well, maybe. Uh, could be worse. Michael Bell is at it again with another set of Crash and Spyro toys in these collar bags. Crash gets a pullback car, a standard figure, a walking toy, one with what appears to be a launcher. These are rather obscure, so not much is documented on these, which is a shame. Crash Bandicoot Entranced is the second Crash game to hit the Game Boy Advance as a 2D platformer with the occasional 3D segment. If you pre-ordered the game in Japan, you'd get this bag with Crash's face on it. You could put your Game Boy Advance aside to protect it, but I doubt it'd do much. It looks cool, though. Both the UK and US editions contain a poster. The UK poster has the logo with a silhouette of Crash, and the US poster has the box art. And Trance got a Day of One limited edition special in the United States. Inside the box, it contained the game, obviously, an Entrance poster, which is what you saw previously, a student planner, which we don't know what it looks like, and the official soundtrack of the game. Konami published the Entrance guide for Japanese players, while Prima published a guide for the US. Each guide features detailed maps and secrets to help you beat the game. One in prize machines, or was sold at the Universal Store, is this Crash plush dressed as a superhero by Killy Toy or Play by Play. These plushes aren't in the best quality, but are still sought after by collectors. In November of the same year, Crash Nitro Kart hit store shelves for the PS2 and Xbox. Inside early copies contain a CD soundtrack of the game. Interestingly, the same gimmick is used twice in the same year. If you pre-ordered the game in Japan, you'd get this pullback card crash in a blue card just like in this advert. So flip this ad around and you'll see... Oh my god! European ad showcases Crash driving like a boss with text saying the Fast and the Mischievous, in reference to the Fast and the Furious. Australia has these things called Tazos, small discs you plane around, basically stunt wheels as it says on the box of chisels. Each specially marked box will contain these crash standees with rings you throw to knock them down. The promotion most likely lasted until the end of the year or a little beyond that. Crash Fusion Purple is part of a Crash and Spyro crossover that not many people are fond of but some collector's cards were made with small bios of each character. These were either sold in packs or specially marked boxes of food. 
A cool concept since you did collect cards in the game. In UK McDonald's Kids Meals, you can get these bizarre looking LCD games. These are notorious for their hideous design, but they do in a way have their charm. Universal Studios got in some new plushes featuring Crash in an American outfit, a St. Patrick's outfit, one where he's holding a flower for Mother's Day, another Halloween Crash but with a pumpkin, a Christmas Crash, and an army one where he's carrying a flag. Both Kelly Toy and Toy Nubrick always seem to dress their characters in holiday themed outfits to give variety in their toy lines. Since the last game left a sour taste in the mouths of fans, Crash Twin Sanity comes in with a better story and gameplay that won't disappoint. A German press kit from 2004 is a booklet type kit with pages that have info, screenshots, and artwork about Crash Twin Sanity and Spyro A Hero's Tale. The press disc contains high quality assets from both games including artwork, logos, screenshots, videos, and game info. Shout out to the Crash Bandicoot Archive on Twitter, you rock! As a way of saying thank you for playing a demo or pre-ordering the game, you got the sandball with the logo and some art of Crash and Cortex attempting to work as a team. Another promo alongside the ball was this bag featuring the box art but with a white background. Both of these items were not for sale, but could be obtained at E3 or through pre-ordering the game. Nokia phones would come with games like Snake or Brick Break. But these would feature Crash games. Each phone would have Crash on it that appears to be late 90s artwork. Some would come in this box featuring Nitro Kart and Sonic N. Quiz Restaurant did a promotion featuring Rayman, Sonic, Ratchet, Spyro, and of course Crash. These figures are very rare since not many people knew of this promotion, and it was exclusively in France. This hat of Crash from Twin Sandy box art could be found in places like Hot Topic for a limited time. It's just a standard black cat with Crash slapped on as an afterthought. Prima published a guide for Crash Twin Sandy, and apparently there's this official Crash magazine where you could win the game by mailing your entry. According to the Crash Wiki, the official Crash Bandicoot magazine is a magazine that was included in an edition of the Jetix magazine. It was released in 2005, but is no longer being sold. The magazine includes interviews with Crash Cortex, exclusive artwork, and pre-release information about Crash Twin Sanity. It also spoke about Crash Tag Team Racing. The magazine only had one issue and it was actually attached to a different magazine which focused on Spyro instead, which could be read by reading it from the back of the official Crash Bandicoot magazine and turning it upside down. Sadly, there are no scans of the book other than the cover. If you look closely in this ad, you can see the two dudes, Chris Pontios and Steve-O, who have performed tricks from the game and TV adverts. I was to demonstrate. <laughs> Take control of an orange daredevil and evil genius using bone-crushing team moves. Just because they're working together doesn't mean they gotta like it. Something went wrong. Crash to Insanity, rated E for everyone. This would air all the time when I watched Cartoon Network and Nickelodeon. I have no idea why this ad was made. Gay marriage wasn't legalized yet, and these two either way would not make a good couple. It's from the UK, but still! Japan has the cuter ad of Crash pushing Cortex away in a comedic fashion. This is how you promote your game. These stamps with the same artwork are given out as a bonus for pre-purchasing the game or are found in a stamp machine. In a contest by DMAG, an Australian pop culture themed magazine, you could win a Crash Bandicoot disc featuring posters, wallpapers, screensavers, and a background for your computer featuring Nitro Kart. There's also a link to their website which is actually still up to this day. Crash Tag Team Racing, the third Crash themed racing game where you don't always race, you get to explore a theme park for additional features. Radical Games staff members were given these statues after the games shipped out to stores. In the UK, these statues were actually given out as a bonus for pre-ordering the game. Many of these would break as they are fragile. Pawn Shop Hero on YouTube showcased this rare press kit of Crash Tag Team Racing, which contains a disc and some artwork. He doesn't know if it's complete or how much it's worth. But what we do know is that it's an obscure piece and we can guess this disc contains a demo or some early concepts. Both the US and Japan got CTTR stickers in their distinct art style. It's unknown how you got them, but they're cool novelties nonetheless. This surfboard is a curious item, and it's unknown if it were sold in stores, given to a Radical Games employee, 
or was a promotional item. But I do know the shirt was given to Radical Games employees to wear. It features Crash in 007 style artwork on bland white t-shirts. This ball of Crash riding a jet board was most likely sold at Walmart, Kmart. It'd either be in a basket of balls or its own box, but sadly this one is in a box. Kelly Toy released a set of Crash Bandicoot plushes for claw machines, featuring Crash in his normal outfit, in scuba gear, a pillow even, and Cortex. Some ended up with the Nintendo brand like this one. Despite the tag reading 2001, these plushes were actually released in 2005, with some reprints in 2007, like this one, boasting the Nintendo tag. These tags were left over from Kelly Toy's 2001 Mario plush line. McDonald's is at it again with LCD games, but this time with Crash and Spyro. The US would get the Happy Meal box, while Canada got fragile bags that easily rip and tear. On the windows of McDonald's restaurants, you'd see his poster showcasing the toys, and inside, they'd have a display of the toys in physical form. On the other side of the poster, that'd be on the front of the restaurant, has Crash and Spyro playing the dance game. These toys were advertised like crazy. TV adverts aired almost non-stop on Cartoon Channel to let kids know these things exist. They're cool looking handheld games, but these aren't made to last since the battery life in these types of LCD games die from age. 2006 is considered a dark age for video game franchises like Sonic and Spyro, but I beg to differ. Crash Boom Bane hit Nintendo's latest handheld, the DS. It's a party game much like Crash Bash, only not as good according to critics. In Japan, the shoe shine kit was given out to those who pre-ordered the game. How odd! A shoe cleaning kit of all things to get as a bonus. The US bonus is just a DS case, which is easier to understand. But a shoe shine kit? Either way, it's cool. Japanese editions of the game came with the stylus of Crash. These kinds of styluses were everywhere when the DS first hit store shelves, featuring mainly Mario and Pokemon. This inflatable crash would be displayed in game stores from 2006 to 2007. He looks like a cross between the American and Japanese crash, with the eyes appearing anime-like. Europe displayed this mini cardboard stand on checkout counters for the game stores to let consumers know the game is up for sale. Alongside that is this double-sided poster with the box art on one side and advertising on the other. This kit was offered in 2006 and required two UPCs from either Act 2 or Crunch and Munch products. The kit included two folders, a notepad, a 6 inch ruler, three pencils, a pencil sharpener, eraser, and a pencil case. Another shout out to the Crash Bandicoot archive on Twitter. Without you guys, this video would not be possible. Bandicoot gets a new look and not many people were too fond of it, much like Spyro. Crash of the Titans was promoted at a UK balloon festival in 2007. They gave out temporary tattoos based on the ones Crash has in-game and supposedly made balloon sculptures of the characters, judging by the Cortex hat. A demo is also available for guests to play. Vivendi Games held a promotion in Australia and New Zealand in cooperation with Razer, Armadillo, and Omni. Several Crash and Spyro themed prizes were being given in daily draws to lucky registrants of games from either franchise. Any game from The Wrath of Cortex and Spyro and Inner Dragonfly onward were acceptable. Back in 2007, Crash became the official mascot for the school and youth programs, a part of the Leukemia and Lymphonia Society. There were several promotions using Crash of the Titans and Mind Over Mutant artwork to raise awareness of these conditions including downloadable wallpapers. The society would wear these t-shirts of Crash with their logo on it as a means of spreading awareness. At a convention in the UK, some vendors would be selling these one put juice energy drinks and trust me if you plan on staying up, you'll need it. Prima published the slender Crash of the Titans guide for all platforms, Xbox 360, Wii, and Nintendo DS. These mugs of Crash and Spyro are most likely sold in game stores. What's wrapped in those bags is unknown, however. Crash of the Titans also got an official CD soundtrack with all the songs from the game in two discs. It was either sold in stores, at an event, or as a pre-order bonus. This statue might be one as well, or like the one from Crash Tag Team Racing, this was given to employees who worked on the game. Either way, this is the coolest looking piece from Crash of the Titans. I consider this a press kit, but not really. There's a making of book with DVD for Crash of the Titans, which was actually named, and I kid you not, 
crash jacking. <laughs> the book has production art of all the characters and environments, along with some behind the scenes pictures of staff in crash mascot costume with FX artist Landon Kent inside. The DVD has more of the same as well as early demo films, including animation tests and interviews with the staff. A Crash Jacking demo DVD with mod game booklet shows moves, enemies, and level progression, which also contains early demo footage from 2006. These kinds of pieces are historical, no matter how poor the reviews and opinions of others are regarding the game. Continuing with Crash's new look, Mind Over Immune hit store shelves in 2008. Prima published a strategy guide for the game featuring the box art once again. The art would also be used for this advert you'd find in gaming magazines. Colossus added again with their Crash Face Biscuits called Gusto the Garo Kids. They're just in smaller packs of Crash and Coco on the packaging. Italian gamers got a Crash themed skateboarding contest. Come and challenge your friends between evolutions and pure freestyle music at Crash Bandicoot Skate Buzz Trick Contest. Saturday, October 2nd at 5 p.m. That's a rough translation thanks to Google. If you won, you'd get an Xbox 360 with Crash Mind Over Mutant. In German game stores, you'd see this hand with Crash in the logo. I don't know if Coco's on the other side, but this is the only photo of the sign. These magnets were either sold or given out as a bonus for of Mind Over Mutant. Each magnet is a character from the game, and Crash gets three since he's the protagonist. There's also a logo magnet. It's a nice piece, but this game pales in comparison to Crash of the Titans line of merch. Following the release of Mind Over Mutant, Radical Entertainment started working on their next game. 2009 went by without a mention of Crash's next big adventure, but the studio was secretly considering a reboot known as Crash Landed, which was slated for a 2010 release. This title was cancelled before it had a chance to be officially revealed, but luckily, quite a few concepts, images, and videos have surfaced since then, giving us a sizable impression of what it was intended to be like. Radical Entertainment spent a lot of time coming up with new ideas and deciding what would give Crash his old flair again. They quickly settled on a reboot of Crash's universe and story, featuring stunning cartoony graphics and a new visual style. The game was cancelled after two years in development. During production of Mind Over Mutant, Activision acquired Sierra and all of its subsidiaries, which included Radical Entertainment. During a massive layoff spree in 2010, Activision shut down the Radical Division in charge of Crash Landed. Activision's decision to not pass the project to a different studio suddenly halted its progress forever. One factor that contributed to this decision was a certain lack of tangible results. Despite the numerous concepts, animations, and an impressive graphics engine for its time, Radical reportedly had little to show in terms of gameplay. Leading Activision to decide the project was not financially viable. The fact that they were so close to the proposed release date did not help matters. Despite the game's cancellation, the Ansel Creative Group, a creative agency in Canada, was working on a press kit. It was meant to include a special collector's edition DVD in a fancy case, coupled with a map. Said DVD was basically a lengthy demo version of the game, and the map showcased all the major events and locations from Wumpa Island that you can visit in the demo. Not only that, but there is also an idea for the map to include a McDonald's discount for a hypothetical tie-in of McWumpa Burger, showing that a valuable effort was taking place to make Crash a relevant icon again after his then-ongoing decline in popularity. In 2016, Crash Bandicoot joined the Skylanders franchise with Cortex. Skylanders Imaginators bundles would come with Crash and Cortex figures, or you can get the set separately in this pack. The prototype of the Crash figure isn't much different to the finished product other than not having any real color. As a quick fun fact, Crash appeared in the Skylanders webtoon called Skylanders Academy, and the title of said episode he appeared in is called Crash Landing, paying homage to the game that never reached full development. Well, kind of. It was called Crash Landed, but close enough. One year later, the fans would give what they've been dying to have for so long. A remaster of the original Crash Trilogy, 
No more reboots. This is what the fans need before Crash fades into obscurity. It first released on the PlayStation 4 and the Xbox One consoles, and later onto the Switch in 2018. At San Diego Comic Con, first four figures had this bad boy up for sale. It's a detailed statue of Crash made to look like the in-game model. It also come with a leaflet containing reward points you can redeem on the first four figures website to get a discount on your next purchase. There's also an exclusive edition that gives you a bonus day one card, but the real big hitters in the first four figure line are these Crash and life-size Aku Aku statues. The life-size was an exclusive with only a handful made, along with this Crash that comes with crates. Prima published a strategy guide for the game, and at the time, Prima was on its way out of business. But they came back to continue publishing game guides shortly after their doors closed. Sony also made a guide to the Insane Trilogy. It's smaller, but it still contains what you need to beat the game. Kid Robot made funny plushes of Crash, Derpy Crash, Coco, and Cortex. They'd be sold at GameStop up until the year 2019. Kid Robot also had a line of mini vinyl figures. Each box contained a random figure, so if you ended up with a duplicate, you can trade with friends or fellow collectors. The set consists of Crash, Cortex, Derpy Crash, Glow in a Dark Crash, Aku Aku, Coco, Crash with Aku Aku Mask, and Uka Uka. Figure pens are sold almost everywhere video game merch is. Crash Bandicoot has one of him giving two piece signs and one of them wearing the Aku Aku Mask. These figure pins would come in solid plastic containers that look so good that you won't want to open them. Tubbs is a series of characters as rubber ducks, and Crash has a set featuring the Bandicoot himself, Coco, Cortex, and Dr. Engine. Each Tubbs comes in a tub-like container. These things are bizarre yet charming, and collectors seem to like them. They were designed by Numskull, a company that works on official merchandise for brands like Capcom, Sega, Bandai Namco, Activision, and more. Their online store has a line of Crash merchandise like Crash, Cortex, Aku Aku, and Uka Uka keychains, a Crash heat changing mug, a Nitro and TNT mug that never hits store shelves, and a Aku Aku and Crash Steel mug, a Crash Aku Aku classic and fuzzy snapback caps, an Aku Aku and Crash wallet, a Crash coin purse, a set of Crash candles, and a Wumpa Fruit scented candle. Wonder what that smells like. Crate coasters, a crate stress ball or box, a crash bottle opener, a pin set with a crate to store them in, a crash raglan t shirt, an insanity bead shirt, Aku Aku witch doctor, Wumpa juice, and Cortex laboratory shirts, and an ugly crash Christmas sweater. All of these items could be found in GameStop and possibly Hot Topic. Merchoid also had a lineup of Crash themed items like this set of lights featuring Crash, Cortex, and Aku Aku. The TNT light wasn't a part of the set, but it's worth noting. Uka Uka got a 3D mug. Most mugs have prints, but this was fully carved to have 3D features. Crash got a heat changing mug where if it were cool, he'd be gone, but if you put warm liquid inside it, Crash would appear. Best of the lineup is this Crash statue inside this light up dome. It is to say, a very lit piece. Party City has this scary looking Crash costume, and I thought the last one was scary, but this, this is worse. They went with a realistic design, and it just looks uncanny. Those teeth, I think, are what make this costume scary. Inside specially marked boxes of the game, you'd get a pair of Crash themed socks, or as the box says, insane socks. GameStop would also have Crash socks, just not in blue, along with more t-shirts and hats according to this advert. Crash also got underwear. Yeah, not kidding. You can see these pairs are beside Mario themed underpants. This shirt is of Crash giving a thumbs up and one of Crash breaking out, probably found at GameStop and or Hot Topic. Premark made these PJs of Crash with text saying, spin, jump, wump. At Macy's, you can find these t-shirts of Crash and one of Aku Aku saying, OOPA DE GOD! Exclusively a Hot Topic was the standard Crash t-shirt with the logo and render of Crash. Cable guys are statues of characters that can hold controllers or phones to have them charged. Basically a glorified charging station. And Crash got not one, but two cable guys figures. One of him with and without the Aku Aku mask. At Five Below, they sold these Crash stickers and pins, and perhaps this gel pin. 
along with other character themed stickers and pens. These only lasted up to the end of 2018. These pens of Crash and Cortex could be found at GameStop and our EB Games. And speaking of, EB Games had this exclusive Crash 3D head mug on their shelves. Found on a French site called Edition Collector, this Crash crate contains items like a glass, messenger bag, wallet, and lanyard. These items can be bought separately on their website like this pen set in a crate and mug. It's much like the pen set by Numskull. Also from France is a special edition collector's kit by FNAC, not to be confused with FNAC, with lithographs, pens, and a book which contains some artwork from the game. There's also an English version with the box art of the game as the cover. This Japanese Crash Bandicoot Saint Trilogy promotional postcard was given out to attendees who played the Nintendo Switch port of the game at the Tokyo Game Show. The Bandicoot Files book got a special edition sleeve if you bought it in France's Japan Expo, potentially a convention or a shop. The sleeve looks more like the original Willy Wombat Pitch Bible, with the old UIS logo and everything. The books themselves aren't that rare, but if you have one with the sleeve, you've got yourself a valuable piece. Para released a set of metal statues of Crash Cortex and Aku Aku with collectible coins. Each statue is made of a strong metal that is sure to last a lifetime. Pop Funko figures are to some people addicting to collect, and Crash has a solid lineup of figures featuring Crash, Fake Crash, Crash and Scuba Gear, Crash Spinning, Biker Crash, that was exclusively a hot topic, a limited edition Best Buy Crash that glows in the dark, a black and white Crash exclusive Chase Edition, a flocked edition of Crash exclusive to GameStop, Coco, Aku Aku, Cortex, Tiny Tiger, and Nitrous Oxide. There's also a Pop Funko Pet Dispenser of Crash, but sadly no one else from the game. The variants for these things are nuts! I'm glad I don't collect these, otherwise I'd be in hell as a collector. Some boxes of the Crash Bandicoot Insane Trilogy came with this green Crash themed wireless controller. Bundles like these are nice if you want to get the game, but also a new controller and wireless ones are the best to get. Crash also gets a themed kit for your Switch featuring a carrying case, earbuds, screen protectors, and a cloth to clean your console. Similar in style is this wired Switch controller by Minetta, a company that makes these themed controllers. 2018 was the year when I first discovered adult coloring books. The funny thing is, there's one of Crash. Yup, it's official ladies and gentlemen. These stickers are from the same year, but it's unknown where these are sold. All I know is they look amazing. At eBay Games, you can get an exclusive steel case for the Xbox One edition, along with a Golden Crash Totaku figure. It can be bought separately, but for a time, it was a small bonus. Totaku figures are collectible figures featuring your favorite video game characters like Crash Bandicoot, Coco, Cortex, and more. They're miniature statues exclusive to eBay Games and GameStop, and I love them. A limited edition of the Insane Trilogy came with this Aku Aku book for 80 bucks. It's more than twice the price you'd pay for the game originally, but avid game collectors are willing to go the distance in hopes of this limited time offer to pay off. A fan favorite from the late 90s was Crash Team Racing, and the demand was met. A remake by the name of CTR Nitro Fuel hit store shelves for the Nintendo Switch and PS4. It was official, the Bandicoot is here to stay! Sour Patch Kids and Trident Vibes join forces with Activision for a promotion where you can get exclusive digital content for the game. It's nothing too special, but it's worth mentioning. Since Crash Team Racing Nitro Field is a racing game, this car bobblehead was made of Crash wearing a hula skirt. If I drove a car, I'd have this bad boy on my dash. Beanox held a release party for the game with the go-kart race. Whoever won to receive a gold trophy and all participants got a golden steering wheel. This VIP event was held in France and the presentation for it was nothing short of phenomenal. You can get sick photo shoots with the Crash mascot and play a demo of the game. Walmart had this mini display showcasing that the PS4 edition gets exclusive retro card skins, which is a really nice touch. Best Buy has a better display though, with an exclusive shelf for the game and a mini cardboard standee. Beanox celebrated National Donut Day with the team by making these Crash themed donuts and trophies. It was also around this time that the PlayStation hit its 25th anniversary. These kegs are made for the occasion, with Crash on the PS1, Toro on the PS2, Sackboy on the PS3, 
and Astro Bot on the PS4. Now the skull is added again with two snapback caps, two t-shirts and a racing jacket, a trophy in a crate keychain, a CTRNF medal, a trophy, wumpa crate, and badge mugs, tire coasters, a toolbox pen set, a logo air freshener, furry dice, and an incense burner, which looks amazing. This company always does a fantastic job with their merchandise lines. From the mug designs to their coasters is genius. Pop Funko released a set of minifigures of the cast and carts, and this big one a crash pulling off a stunt. These guys were sold at GameStop and EV Games up until the year 2019 ended. Crash Team Racing Nitro Field also has a webcomic you can read for free with a cute cartoony art style. This art book, much like the Insane Trilogy book, is in a similar style and comes in English and French languages. Polestar, a clothing company, designed this t-shirt of Crash riding the signature blue cart with Aku Aku on the back. On the front, it just has the logo. A company by the name of NECA released this incredible figure of Crash. He looks like he was ripped straight out of the game. He also got one with his jet board, jet pack, scuba gear, and Aku Aku mask with extra faces. Coco and Cortex were going to get figures according to the 2019 Toy Fair, but they never hit store shelves. A darn shame since these figures were of high quality. NECA also created solar powered body knockers. If you place them at a window with sunlight, they will wobble back and forth. Crash also got these blind bag backpack hangers with Crash in different poses, Coco, Cortex, Aku Aku, and Uka Uka. The only way to tell what you're getting is to feel the packaging, but even then, it'd be difficult with the extra plastic packaging inside. It seems companies are getting more clever at the way they package their merchandise. Some boxes of seats the RNF contain digital content and pins of Crash, Coco, Cortex, and Nitrous in this cute, wacky art style. In some states of the US, a bus of Crash holding keys would drive around, dropping off people to their destination. Now this module isn't from the Insane Trilogy or Nitro Field, so where is he from? The mobile games? I don't think so. In the year 2020, some lucky people got this mysterious puzzle that is Crash themed. Put together and you get this odd looking mask character. It looks like from Crash because it is from Crash! Crash 4 to be exact! It's about whooping time baby! Many people, myself included, are shocked to see this game announced to the public. I'm hyped and so is the world. Numbskull is celebrating with their line of merchandise themed after the upcoming game. Two more snapback caps, two t-shirts, a mug of socks, an orange pint glass, a rubber keychain, two pen sets, one with Crash and Coco, and the other with Cortex and Engine. A gaming locker, an LED light, micro USB cord with thumb grips, and a statue of Crash taking a selfie. There's another pen set, and this one contains Dingo Dino, and I can't quite tell who the other character is. This light-up stand is of the new Crash design for the fourth game. It, along with some of the Numbskull merch, was announced before the game, so it gave a hint to us that a new game was on the way. Crash 4 is getting an art book, and this is the concept cover. Its release date is October 26. Play by play, yes, these guys are still around and they made three new Crash plushes. One of them smiling, giving two peace signs, and with the Aku Aku mask. Now these are really nice plushes, they look wacky, and I love them. If you pre-ordered the game in the US, you'll get an hourglass. In the UK, you'll get cubic figures. And Dutch countries like Netherlands get this tote bag. I'm surprised Japan doesn't have anything to crash for. Whatever happened? Where are they? Much like the NECA Coco Cortex figures, the Kid Robot Big Crash Plush and the TNT Nitro mugs, as I said before, were cancelled. They never hit store shelves despite the mugs being on Numbskull's website. Verse 4 Figures is released in the Cortex statue, and by the time this video is up, Order 3 statues will be shipped. Sorry, but uh, you kinda missed your chance. Crash Bandicoot is on the verge of becoming a dead franchise, but the fans and even Activision pulled through. Without a loud fanbase, the franchise dies. That's why franchises like Mario and Sonic are still alive. They are vocal and open about their passion for these characters. In a way, fans pull off the best marketing campaigns by creating videos, fan art, 
and posting on all kinds of social media platforms about the games. Let the world know about the things you love. Because of people like you, Crash is still alive and we have a fourth game in the original series to prove it. So, uh, now that you've done Crash, uh, when are you gonna do Spyro? Holy crap, Ola. Holy lumpin' crap. I have been recording for one hour and 43 minutes and a half. As of this time in recording, oh my gosh. But hey, it was worth it. Thank you so much for watching, but more importantly, thank you for 2,000 subscribers. To be honest, after 1K... I didn't realize that I would hit 2k. Maybe I'll hit 3k by the end of the year, but that's uh, kind of pushing it. But anyway, this is actually not the end of the video. Stay tuned, there will be bloopers for this video. So, uh, have fun listening to me stumble upon my words and make up new ones. Have fun! These easily rip and tear. Just like my voice, it easily rips the tears, it cracks whenever it feels like it. The guide for Crash to Chew? Crash Chew in Japan. Chupan. Oh my gosh, I'm gonna be kicked in the butt for this. The guide for Crash 2 Tune? How many different alternative names am I gonna give this game? Stop! Much like it's per <laughs> What is that? What the frick is that? Why did I make that sound? Man, I really need to get my head checked. Do not underestimate the power to place, J place Jason? What is that? Why am I making up these words? I really, really need a speech coach. Because... I can't enunciate to save my freaking life! The second sis of Crash, fake Crash. <laughs> Man, my voice crashed! <laughs> Listen to that voice crack, baby! Oh my word! Originally, a b A bane was stored in Sunset Cake! What is with the Western accent? I'm not from Texas! My uncle's from Texas! Oh, I'm losing it. Accessories and toys aimed to boys from ages 6 to 4. From 6 to 4? What? <laughs> How does that work? <laughs> Do you down age? What? <laughs> Why am I laughing at that? The winner will win a trip to the Nepa 500 for Napa, not Nepa. What is Nepa? Who is Nepa? Why is Nepa? Colossi, a food company in. Compy? Compy? What's Compy? Compy sounds like a character from a kids' show. Feel free to use that. Themed erasers and regular erasals. Erasals? Erasals? What are erasals? I guess they're pencils and erasers. They're erasals! Again, feel free to use that. Another shout out to the Crash Bandicoot R5. R5? R5? What's in R5? Crash also got underwear. Yep, you can see these pairs are behind. Behind. <laughs> oh my gosh, the puns are rolling off the tongue this time.